Yeah, I don't have these lights on over this way. I guess I got mood lighting. Right, so did that for effect. Not that it has any genuine effect. Um, what have you ever seen an old movie called Close Encounters of the Third Kind? It's about these uh, aliens landing and uh, all these people were given a vision to go to Devil's Tower um, to uh, commune with the aliens. And uh, the government, of course, knew this as well. And one of the ways they kept people away was uh, they said that, that, oh, there's this dangerous gas leak and, you know, all these cows were dead and whatnot. And everybody was wearing these uh, level five uh, biohazard uh, face masks and, you know, they're just scaring the, the hell out of the locals. They're trying to get everybody out so they could actually see the aliens and... and <laughs> Um, when they rounded up the last people the night before the aliens visited, it's a movie, I'm not talking about aliens, is that they put all the people in the helicopter, and as soon as the helicopter lifted away with the civilians, all the, uh, the generals and colonels and whatnot, I was like, oh, thank God, and they all <laughs> took their masks off. One of the most uh, disgusting things I've actually seen over the past couple of years, and you actually can see this even on news, not that I believe the news, but uh, live coverage, is you'd have important people around a table, and everybody's just like this, you know, normal. And yet you could see in the background, which people don't usually look, they're like looking at the president or, you know, some important dignitary. You know, which are all just like this. You know, all the peons behind them that are like pouring the coffee and, you know, arranging the silverware. They, they're, you know, they're all like this. You know? You got 30 people around a table, the important people. But all the peons behind them, you know, they're all like this. Yeah, that, that's sort of two-tiered uh, hypocrisy and just evil tyranny absolutely disgusted me to my core. I wanted to mention that before talking about a couple things in this video. By the way, this is really important. You should look it up. Um, I don't watch Joe Rogan, but there's a really important episode, and I, I saw it, at least the important part, where um, uh, Zuckerbucks, <laughs> you know, a head of uh, fake book, isn't that his name, Zuckerbucks, uh, was uh, talking about uh, what the FBI did a couple years ago, what the FBI apparently did, so, you know, I have no love for Zuckerbucks, by the way. No love at all. So he's either lying about that, Zuckerbucks, about what the FBI did, or he's telling the truth. There's absolutely no reason that I could think of that he's lying about that when he was talking to uh, Joe Rogan. You should look it up. Well, so it's 100% illegal and unconstitutional what the FBI did and what they strong-armed... Uh, Zuckerbucks there to do a few years ago, so you should look that up. There have been talk recently of uh, something called silent quitting. I can give first-hand account of that. I encountered it today. I've been encountering it for the past year, year and a half. And I, and I get a lot of it. You know, I want people who are like living in their mom's basement playing video games. And they've just given up. Silent quitting is uh, the premise that you're still working but you're doing as little as possible to keep from getting fired. So you're basically phoning it in. The American dream is essentially gone. It's actually not essentially gone. It is 100% gone. Um, housing prices while starting to fall, raw land prices and whatnot is not falling at all because I watch that stuff on a daily basis. Basically, the point is, is that there's so many bills and prices are so high for absolutely everything is that nobody has any hope of actually having a family and having a home anymore. It used to be like you work hard, you know, you get the weekend off with your wife and your kids and the little puppy dog, and, you know, you get a nice um, house in the suburbs somewhere. It might take you 20, 30 years to pay. Prices are astronomically high. The incentive is completely gone, and people don't believe in working hard anymore. They really don't. I mean, I see so many people that are doing stuff and it really pisses me off. I mean, it, it hardcore pisses me off. They're doing stuff that I would have gotten fired in an instant for. Um, I had to report one guy today at a place I was at and uh, I spend a lot of money there and I won't put up for that at all. 
And, you know, the management, uh, he didn't have to treat me special, he just had to treat me like any other regular customer. And I reported that guy. I don't feel bad at all about reporting that guy. I, one rule I have is I don't let people get away with stuff I never, ever would have uh, been able to get away with. I mean, they would have fired me on the spot for stuff like that. And I just see that all the time now. People just, it's half their laziness, and it's the other half and well, another third, actually, and the fact that bills are so high that nobody can save two cents to rub together. And I know what that's like. I work seven days a week. I don't have medical insurance because I can't afford it. I struggle to pay the bills. Um, thankfully, I was able to, this with my wife, who's now dead of uh, brain cancer, we're able to pay off this house. It's a $65,000 house. It's not in a great neighborhood. It's not in a bad neighborhood, but it's paid off at least, and it's a nice brick house but people have just given up so the silent quitting stuff is real i see it everywhere everybody i talk to about it agrees there's this self-defeatist like why even try why i'm going to do as little as possible so i don't lose my job it's just everybody's just given up it's this uh, complete hopelessness there is it's like all hope has been lost by these people they don't believe and and i know what that's like my utility bills and i really really conservative with power I only live in one room of this house I keep the temperature like at 75 degrees which is hotter than most people 75 or 76 and yet my electric bill is uh, normally it's like 90 bucks now it's two hundred dollars um, water bills not greatly higher um, gas bills up substantially I also too have propane which is for heating and for the stove my utility bills are basically double. We all know how astronomical food prices are, so. The student loan forgiveness nonsense is 100% buying votes, and it turns out that 70% uh, of the $500 billion that it's costing is only going to actually help uh, wealthy people, not poor people. Like, you know, the poor student, you know, or the poor nurse, someone's like a nurse, which actually pays pretty good money. 70% of uh, the loan forgiveness is not going to the people that actually need it. Um, it's a $500 billion tax, and it's going to throw gasoline on inflation. It is absolutely a train wreck from hell. Everything in this country, including countless other countries, I like to get to this here, is just going south. I'm not a doom and gloomer. I'm not. I'm absolutely not. Uh, did you know that catalytic converters, which contain platinum and rhodium, depending on the type of catalytic converter, catalytic converter thefts are up 1,300%. 1,300%. Here's another statistic. I, I don't have the exact percentage in front of me. I post it on my parlor feed. By the way, in my description, where you still have freedom of speech, because Twitter is evil and I never use Twitter, I'm on Parler and Gab and uh, Truth Social where you can actually uh, talk freely. And I posted the statistic up there. It's an astronomically high number. It's like, well, how are people making it? And the answer is they're not. Because I don't have, and one of the great mysteries to me, I understand it now, mystery to me for like two plus years, is how are people doing it? People that have a wife and kids and a house payment and a car payment, I don't have any of that. And I know I'm fat. You think I spend a lot of money on food. I actually don't. I was like, how are they doing it? Uh, credit cards are uh, used. People that have uh, filed for, uh, applied for new credit cards is astronomically high. It is just completely off the hook high. I forget the exact percentage, but it's enough to make your eyeballs pop out. I have that statistic up on Parler and Gab. I uh, post things in triplicate on the three different platforms. Because one of my fundamental principles is that redundancy is God. I'm not going to post stuff. I have no love for fake book, even though I'm on there. I mean, I'm, I'm radically sick of uh, the censorship across uh, social media. It just makes me want to puke, stick my finger down my throat and puke. I mean that literally. So I am on Gab and Parler and... Uh, just there's way there's way too much censorship online. It's just I don't need to tell you that. I mean it's just blatantly obvious. But people are living off their credit cards. The credit cards are going to crash. They're going to max them out, and then they won't be able to pay it. They're just going to default because it's unsecured debt. That's a matter for another discussion. Yeah, catalytic converter thefts are up 1,300 um, percent. Did you know that? Ca uh, 
I hate to use the word California, but I'm going to use it because it's accurate. California. California is banning gas cars by 2035. What this technically is is another system of control because that's what tyranny is really good at is sitting back and dreaming up new methods of control. You got this control, that control. You got regular taxes, property taxes, on and on. And we need to talk about the 87,000 IRS agents and the fact that the IRS for the past few years, this is not conspiracy, it's fact, been hoarding millions and millions and millions of rounds. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, that's not another system of control, right? No. It's called geofencing, where, and I hate electric cars. I, I wrote articles for Apple. Some of the articles I wrote for Apple are still up on Apple's well. I know a lot about lithium batteries. I know about bricking car batteries. One of the horrible things you could do to a lithium battery, one of the worst, there's three things primarily, is uh, rapid discharge, and, and especially taking it low is another aspect, and that is what, of course, um, electric cars do. Lithium technology is really fascinating, but it has some horrible, horrible attributes. It's kind of like a beautiful supermodel that has incurable diseases. Like, wow, I love to kiss her and hug her. It's like, no, you catch something you can't cure. Uh, you know. Lithium batteries are superficially beautiful technology, but I know way too much of it. The electric cars are horrible. People think that this is some sort of green technology, and it's not. Have you ever seen what a lithium pit looks like? Also, too, this makes the United States and Europe and other countries slave to the CCP and other entities that actually, for decades now, have been buying up property associated with lithium mining. It's horrible, evil technology. And it's not green tech. Well, it's a zero-admission electric car. What are you talking about, you fat, tattooed, bald man? Where do you think the electricity comes from to charge it? Most of it is not from uh, wind and solar. It's from coal and nuclear and propane. It's not, it's not, you've just transferred the emissions from the car. Oh, it's a zero emission electric car. You transfer the emissions from the car to the power plant. Where do you think the power is coming from to charge that thing? So they're banning, uh, uh, California is banning gas cars by 2035, zero emission cars. You ever know about lithium bricking? You ever heard of lithium bricking? I've known about it for a long, long time. Most people have never heard of lithium bricking. Go do a Google search on lithium bricking. Um, and if, the, if one control wasn't enough, the billion controls we have in countless countries, but especially here in the United States that I'm focusing on temporarily here in this video. This guy called Amish Miller, excuse me, Amish. He's Amish. His name is Amos Miller. Look up Amos Miller. He's got $300,000 in fines. Uh, the government is planning on throwing him in jail. He doesn't use gasoline. Yeah, he's Amish. He doesn't use fertilizer. And uh, he's, a, he's the most evil entity on planet Earth, according to the United States government, because this guy uh, butchers his own cows and he sells them to people that want non-GMO meat. A simple Amish farmer that doesn't use gasoline or fertilizer. Yeah, he lives the ultimate green lifestyle. You think these, uh, these uh, people that are, are mentally disturbed with green on their... It must be green, zero emission blue. They think they would love the Amish people. But no, because the guy didn't apply for US FDA stamp and inject his beef with certain hormones and, uh, and ascorbic acid, which is a type of meat uh, 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 stabilizer against bacteria, whatever. There are a couple other things that you're supposed to... According to the FDA, and you need to get the FDA stamp, which of course is you're taxed on, and the government's got to have its buck. Simple guy, ultimate green person, selling his. The government wants to throw him in jail and throw away the key. Three hundred thousand dollars in fines already. He's heading to jail. He's. It's absolutely evil. You should read all about uh, Amos Miller and what the uh, government uh, is doing. Here's something else, too, I found in the statute. I actually did uh, research on this. I know I use this, but this is U.S. FDA propaganda and evil trash uh, if you don't have the U.S. FDA stamp on your frigging meat. I've been talking to every butcher in town, by the way, over the past year and a half plus. You can't believe some of the evils they tell me. I ask them questions like, you know, and it's like a year and a half out if you wanted to have a, a cow, uh, you know, cleaned up. Like you buy a cow and, you know, have it and butcher it up for you. It's a year and a half, which is ridiculous. 
Um, so you can't sell it. You can have it butchered for yourself, but you can never sell it or like split it up with friends. It's totally illegal. So, <clears throat> anyway, the defendant, upon uh, first occasion of the violation, pay the United States government the sum of five hundred dollars for each pound or portion thereof of the meat. So, yeah, you're fined five hundred dollars per pound of non-U.S. FDA stamped meat. The guy has been farming and uh, butchering cows since the dawn of time. He, he probably learned how to do it at the age of five since he's Amish. Yet he is like enemy number one to the United States government, which tells you everything you need to know. By the way, the next uh, fake uh, evil that's coming down is a climate emergency! That's the next one. It'll be some green emergency. And by the way, uh, the green emergency uh, was the evil that was just passed by the United States government. Hey, look, even a criminal emergency. <laughs> well, that's, the, that's the one that actually had inserted in there 87,000 more. What does 87,000 more IRS agents have to do with a green emergency? Most of it was about a green emergency. Anyway, on to the UK. The UK government is uh, planning for winter blackouts and natural gas rationing amid European energy crisis, but the same narrative was really repeated in 2019 2021. Germany, Katharina Droga, uh, this is an expert in uh, German energy, you look at her up, Katharina Droga, adding the nuclear power would make no meaningful contribution to the gas supply. Turns out uh, the people in Turkey, you know, right next to Germany there, they're making tons and tons of heaters, electrical heaters, because the Germans are spooked to death of uh, freezing to death this coming winter. So Germans are buying tons, and look that up if you don't believe me. There's tons of websites that confirm this. Germans are buying tons of electrical heaters from Turkey, which can't make them fast enough for the Deutschlanders. People are so preoccupied right now, too, in the United States. I don't know about your country, but I read every comment, so you tell me. That you could pass a trillion dollar uh, emergency bill of anything, and nobody is watching because they're too busy trying to stay afloat financially. Everybody is living off their credit cards. I mean, I don't know if I consider myself lucky because I have to struggle every day to pay the, the damn bills. But I have no house payment, no car payment. Um, I have no health insurance. I don't have that. I mean, I got plenty of regular taxes, property taxes, gas, water, electric, phone, cable, cell. You know, just too many darn bills. I don't live extravagant. I never go out to a bar. I never go out. To I've been to a movie theater in like 10 or 15 years. I never go out to eat. I don't buy expensive steaks. I love to buy. I was looking at some filet mignons yesterday. I was like, man, those look good. Yeah, I know I'm fat, right? Anyway, filet mignons, I was looking at them. I was staring at them in Sam's Club, which is the cheapest place to get filet mignons. like, yeah, those are too expensive. Oh, I'd really like them. Yeah, you don't need to spend that much money to eat a nice steak, you know. Those are filet mignons. Yeah. Anyway, you could pass anything. The government could get it when people are so occupied trying to stay afloat, you could do anything to them. History bears this out, especially recently. I don't know if you consider World War I or World War II recently, but I mean, that's pretty darn recent. Um, make taxes and misery so high that nobody even cares to work anymore. And this is that uh, uh, silent uh, quitting that they're calling. What are they calling again? It's got a specific, yeah, silent quitting. You're working just enough not to get fired, but you don't care anymore because you know you're never going to have a a wife and a kid and a home and a car, it's just like unobtainable. So people are like, why care? And people just, they don't care anymore. They don't have anything. You know the whole carrot and stick where you hang a carrot in front of a donkey to keep it going? You know, something, you know, to work towards. People are like, why do it? I'm never going to get it. You know, it's like the donkey finally figures out he's never going to get the carrot. It's on the end of a stick no matter how much he walks. He's never going to get it. It's like all of Americans are like this now. I see it everywhere. And that's just me in this one city. If I see it everywhere, I know it has to be going on everywhere else because I've had a lot of people tell me, you're right, I see it everywhere. People, it's like you can't get anything. You used to be able to, like, not that I ever had money. You used to be able to, if you wanted something really bad and you needed it done quick, you could, like, wave money in someone's face and they're like, yes, sir! And they get it done. Bam! You can't even do that anymore. It's like money has become irrelevant. It's like, uh, who cares if you wave money in someone's face? 
It's like, what, you know, even if I took the money, what would I do with it? You know, just give it to the freaking government, which is true. And I get that. People have lost all incentive of hard work. Like, if I work hard, you know, I keep my nose clean, I can have a house and a car, pay the stinking government their evil frigging taxes, which are way worse now, and they're getting worse and worse and worse and worse. It's like, why do it now? Why? The harder I work, the less I make. That's the whole new philosophy. The harder I work, the less I make. I'm going to sit on the couch, eat Doritos, play video games, and struggle. Work just hard enough not to get fired so I can put the gasoline in my car. That way I can go over to my buddy's house on the weekend and play video games with him. And you know that's exactly what's going on because I know damn well that that's exactly what's going on because people have told me as much. And I see it, too. Anyway, the German army will assist law enforcement starting October 1st. There's a lot of stuff coming out of Deutschland saying starting October 1st that uh, resulting possibly in platoons patrolling the street. And they're already practicing this. They're already, there's plenty of pictures out there. Platoons practicing the streets coinciding with the return of face diaper mandates. Mm, only for the unjuiced. The Bundeswehr has always already undertaken the dress rehearsal in June with several squads roaming the streets fully armed and scaring the daylights out of the locals of the town of uh, Iadonoschagen. What is it? I had two years of Germany. Uh, Germany. <laughs> of Deutsch. Ich nicht spreche Deutsch, aber ich spreche Russisch. Es ist sehr gut, ja? Jawohl. So my German is horrible. Uh, Donaushagen. Anyway. Yeah, some observers were really concerned with the conditioning of civilians to accept troops patrolling the streets and being checked for their credentials. Papil and bitter! <laughs> That's not funny at all, but isn't that reminiscent of something else? In, in the, and I'm half German, so don't accuse me of jumping on the back of the Germans, okay? I'm half German. Jawohl! Yeah? Isn't this reminiscent of some other time in Germany? Yeah, Papil and bitter! Show me your papers, please. Yeah? To this end, we have decided to set up as a territorial command on the Bundeswehr in Berlin on the 1st of October, 2022. Mm hmm And by the way, every government, uh, not that it's not collapsing now here in the United States and many other countries that I won't mention, Especially, and I hear from a lot of Kiwis and a lot of Aussies and a lot of Canadians. The people I hear most from, um, uh, Netherlands, number one is Canada, the Kiwis and uh, the Aussies. I am no fan of Anne Rand. She's not a philosopher in the true sense. She's a Western existentialist, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. So I'll leave you with a quote from Anne Rand. I, I can't stand her books or her writings. My favorite author, by the way, my favorite living author is uh, uh, The Unknown God by Deirdre Caribbean. So don't think I'm going after her because she's a chick. So don't even go there with me. Uh, this is Anne Rand, quote, We are fast approaching the stage of the ultimate... Of course, she died quite some time ago. We are fast approaching the stage of ultimate inversion, the stage where the government is free to do anything it pleases while the citizens may act only by permission, which is the stage of the darkest periods of human history. The stage of rule by brute force. What would brute force be? I don't know. Would it be 87,000 IRS agents that are buying, buying tons and tons and tons and tons and tons, millions and millions of rounds of uh, pew, 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 pew. Would, would that be the, the description of, yeah. So the IRS used to be, in your day, people don't like the IRS because they would audit you, which I get. But now... They got 87,000 new IRS agents coming. Yeah, and yeah, they're all packed. So what, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna let, I'm not going to finish the sentence. I'll let you finish the sentence for me. So I'm not a doom and gloomer. I actually can't stand YouTube videos. They're like, oh my God, the world's going to end tomorrow. I can't. Everything is perfectly 100% on track. Multi-pronged affront to humanity of exactly what uh, uh, Q-tip head said. I say Q-tip head, I think you know. You know, Ear Schwab in his book. Yeah? I mean, he wrote a book about it. And by the way, I will quote Herr Q-tip. Yeah? 
I think you know who I'm talking about. Hair Q-Tip said that uh, the leader up there in uh, Kanakistan was his number one disciple. I think those were his exact words. The other one was the, the leader of uh, Kiwi Land. Yeah, she was number two. These are his words. I've seen that interview. It's not fake. It's not conspiratorial. He did write that book. It's actually a free download online. And he did say those things. So don't accuse me of saying something conspiratorial. That's factual. So tell me what you think. I read every comment. Goodbye.